I'm Dr. Kristen R. Bromley. This video series, which is part of my online music academy, specifically accompanies Note Reading Book 3 from my Method Book series. Like all my books, this selection is available to purchase through Amazon and Google Play. For help, see the links in the description below. In the videos which are part of this specific course, I progress through the lessons in Note Reading Book 3, explaining and demonstrating concepts and playing each of the songs and exercises contained therein, so you can hear how they sound and play them right along with me. You are of course welcome to view these videos with or without the book, but with the book you can work through all the songs and exercises, and in the process come to know the entire fretboard and master the skill of playing written notes all along the neck. Alright, let's get to jamming in this lesson. Dr. Kristen Bromley, welcome back. So delighted to have you joining me here in these online lessons. This video goes with lesson 11 in note reading book 3. So in this lesson we're going to work on the key of G major and E minor, essentially one sharp. So those two are relative keys. We learned about relative keys previously when we did A minor which is the relative, so the A natural minor scale is the exact, has the exact same notes as the C major scale and their relative keys. So E minor and G major are relative keys in the same way. So we're working on one sharp. Now there's one way, there's a couple different ways I should say that you could look at this. One way is to go through and know the key of C like we've done and the key of A minor really, but to know the fret intimately with the five positions or we have no sharps or no flats. And now with the key of G major and E minor entering in that one sharp, we could go through and just play C major and alter it so that everywhere there's an F note, it'd be played as F sharp. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is that we're gonna use the exact same scale forms that we used previously, but they're gonna be in different positions. So for example, where we have that first form, for the key of C with our root on the 6th string, middle finger there at the 8th fret, so we're in 7th position, and we have that first form of the major scale, just single octave. We could take that and move it down to 2nd position where we have our middle finger on the G note, which is now the root, and we can play G major. That way, staying with inside the scale that way, we don't have to worry as much about sharps and flats, but you'll notice that when we play G major down there, it has the same notes until we get to that F, which is played as F sharp, one fret higher than F natural, to play G major. So as this lesson gets started, we work the way we did through the very first lesson in the book where we worked for C major, we're going to work on scale form one with the G major scale and then the G major exercise, which is right there in second position. Then we look at the other places that we can play it on the other string sets. So we've got G major in the ninth position with that exact same form, but everything transferred up a string. So, and it's also an octave higher. As we play through the different keys on the guitar, we're gonna find that the octaves change the octaves change um, differently. So with the key of C we had two places that had the same octave. But now with the key of G we only have one place with this low octave. And we have one place with that higher octave on the next string. That same octave can be played in fourth and fifth position. octave higher up in the 12th position, or you could play at 11th and 12th if you do a little shift there. Of course, once we know that fingering form, we want to go and learn the alternate form. So the alternate form, we can't really play down here in the six, uh, down in this low position with that low octave because we don't have enough strings, but we can play it up high, one octave higher, where our pinky is on fret 15 on that 6th string, and we can play the major scale there. Or we can play that alternate form with 
with our pinky, and we're in seventh position. We can also do it on the next string set where our pinky is on the fifth fret of the fourth string, and we can play it in second position. So we have those three options. And those three options happen to all be in the same octave. So you want to review those, those scales, find those for the key of G, maybe think through the notes in those positions, and then you want to start reading. So right here on pages 76 and 77, but we're going to start on page 76, we got the G major scale down in the single octave form. So we're just working in the single octave. We can read G major down in second position. You'll see on page 76 that there are directions that will tell you what to do. Number one, play exercise one using form one in position two. So, root on the sixth string. So that's where we're going to be reading it here. And then it will tell you as you continue, you go through and play the other ones. As I go through, I'm not going to play every single option because it would be repeating these scales. I'm going to give you one time, I'll play it one time in one of the positions and you can play along with the video repeated times in the different positions if you want to, but I'm just going to do it once here or these videos, videos will be eternally long. But we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll mention the different ways that we could maximize and play that scale in the different positions as we go through it. So let's go ahead and get started with number one on page 76. So this is the G major single octave scale exercise number one. We're going to be playing this down in second position where that middle finger is on that low root of G which is at the third fret of the sixth string. So you can play that first form getting comfortable. As, you, as we continue through the rest of the book, there's rarely a time where the actual scale form is written out for us. So we should have them down from the C major scale. We're going to use the same forms that we used. They'll just be in different positions. So you got that 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 4. The key of G major has a single sharp F sharp. So we're going to be playing that F note that we've been playing as F natural will now be F sharp. So that's another way to think of it. We should be familiar with the location of these notes in this position. Okay, let's go ahead and do number one. One and two and ready and go and...
Okay. Now, if we go over to page 77, with that scale, I should say, there, that is the only option we have for playing that single octave scale. That's the only scale form that works in that range. But if we go over to page 77, we have number two, and we can play this single octave scale is one octave higher. And we have a couple different ways that we could play this. We could start on the fifth string with our middle finger at the tenth fret. We have a G major scale there using that same form, form one. Um, that is in, is in ninth position, but we start on the tenth fret with that G on the fifth string. We also have, with that same form, in fourth position, fourth and fifth position, with our middle finger starting on the fifth fret of the fourth string, we have the G major scale there. So we could play it there. That's the two options we have for the first, the first um, scale form. So I'm going to go ahead and do it in the first one, but you will want to practice it in both. But I'm just going to do it in one here, so you've got this video, you've got me playing it once, and you can play it along with me in different positions again and again if you want to, or you've got it in your ear. But we're going to go ahead and start off playing it there in the ninth position. So our middle finger is on the tenth fret, on the G note, so that's the root note, and we play that major scale there. So we'll go ahead and read number two, which is the G major single octave scale, exercise number two. We'll read that there. Or if you want to, you could do it in the fourth position, but uh, fourth and fifth position. But we're going to go ahead and do number two here. So you're going to have one and two and ready and go and... Okay, now that one, we just played that one, or at least I did, in the ninth position with that root on the fifth string. So then that one should be replayed again. And if you didn't, if that was too fast, you didn't quite get all of it, you could continue to work it in that position. But it also should be played in fourth and fifth position, where we play that major scale there with our middle finger on the fourth string at the fifth fret. That's where that major scale is. Besides playing it that additional way, we can use the alternate form. So we can play number two with the alternate form, meaning that I'm using my pinky, or form two you could say, my pinky starting on that G on the sixth string at the fifteenth fret. I could read that scale and play it right there in that position. So 
15th, uh, 12th and 11th, we go down to 11th position, but our pinky is on the root at the 15th fret. So we've got that one. Then it could be replayed where we put our pinky on the 10th fret, and, we, and we're in 7th position to play that scale. So you want to read and play it there. And we could actually go down to 2nd position and play it with that alternate form there. Places, all three places with that form that we have, all three single octave scales with that alternate form can be played with number two, and all of them should be practiced that way. It would really help you out. Then um, we go on to number three where we have one octave higher. So with this higher octave, we have one place to play it with f uh, scale form one. And with scale form one, I can use my index finger or my middle finger there at the 12th fret on the 3rd string. If I use my index finger, I've got 1, 3, and then 1, 2, 4, and then 1, 3, 4. Because we're just living in the single octave, playing it that way keeps from doing any shifting. You can also put your middle finger there, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, you got to shift up. So with your middle finger on that G, you'd be in 11th position. index you stay in 12th position the whole time. Why does it matter? Well, we end up playing it both ways. When we do the full positional form, there's going to be times where we'll be approaching that G from the 7th below, the F sharp below. So, there's times where we'll be fingering that string when we're looking at the full position, 1, 2, 4. And ultimately, when we're playing music, it's rarely written octave to octave in a single octave. So we're a lot of times looking at the full positional form or looking at shifting between forms. And we've done both of those things previously. But here in this single octave, it's a great time to practice just using the alternate fingering of 1, 3, 1, 2, 4 if you want to. So once you're comfortable with that scale, we get to go ahead and play number 3. There is not a single octave form of, uh, of the one octave that reads in this octave um, anywhere kind of normal. If we go high enough, we could read up there in 16th and 17th position. This particular guitar, it's tight. If I have, I have a couple electric solid body electrics that allow me to reach the high notes really easily, and I could practice up in that position if I wanted to. But um, so that that would be another option for practicing this one. But the practical one is to just play it right there in 12th position. Same with the alternate form. We could come up and do the alternate form in 14th position and that one is pretty reachable so as far as playing number three in any other way you could do it with the pinky on that uh, G note at the 17th fret and then playing right there in 14th position using that alternate form that would be the alternate way you could play number three with this one but I'm just gonna go ahead and play it 12th position index finger scale form one on that one here together and then you can work on the alternate ones if you'd like to okay here we go one and two and ready and go and
Okay. And you can practice that one in the other position if you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and go on over to page 78. And we'll look at the single octave forms of the minor scale. So, in 12th position, if we put our index finger on the E, we're on the root note there, and we're going to stay in 12th position. We would finger 1, 3, 4, next string. 1, 3, 4, next string. 1, 3. So that's our single octave scale. First form for the minor. Review that and get comfortable with that scale again. Now we can do that same form on the fifth string. We put our index finger at the seventh fret and we'd play one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three. We can do that same thing down in second position with our index on the fourth string. Now when we get to the second string, we have a couple options because we have to go one fret higher to account for that difference in, in tuning between the G and B string is only a third, unlike the other strings, which is a fourth apart, speaking intervallically. But you have one, three, four, one, three, four, two, four. It's a great way to do it. Or you could also shift up one, three. When we get to the full positional form, we're going to go four, one, two, four. So staying two, four in that position is just fine. That's how we're going to be doing it when we do the full position. Okay. Just like that. Okay, and if we go on up to the ninth fret and put our index finger on the third string, we have an E there. So we can also do the scale form there. We have one, three, four. Then we do need to shift up a fret. One, three, four. So now we're in tenth position at one, three. So those are our options. Now this one's in a higher octave than the other ones were. Okay, let's look at the alternate form or scale form two. With that one, we start with our pinky on the sixth string at the twelfth fret. So we've got our E or our root note there. We're going to be in ninth position. So we play with our pinky, that uh, the root, and then on the next string we have one, two, four, and then on the next string one, two, four, and then on the next string one. So that's how that scale form goes in review. also do that scale form with our pinky at the seventh fret of the fifth string. With this one we'd have one, or the pinky, just that one note, <laughs> four on that string, and then one, two, four on the next string, one, two, four. Then we get to the second string, we can grab it with our middle finger or our index. So you'd have four, one, two, four, one, two, four, and then you can grab it middle finger or index. So it just depends. If you grab it with the index for the full positional form, that's the one that we would actually end up using to continue on with going back to scale form one. But you can play it either way. Sometimes in the melodies it's easier to do it one way or another. But if we played it with our index finger, you just have a little bit of a shift up. So you'd have pinky, fourth, fourth finger, there at the seventh fret, and then one, two, four, one, two, four, shift up to fifth position with your index and come back down. So you can get comfortable with that scale. Then we can put our pinky on the fourth string up at the fourteenth fret and we have four and then one, two, four. We shift up a fret, one, two, four, and then we got one. So that's how the alternate one works in that position. We're in 11th and 12th position. Four, one, two, four, shift up, one, two, four. Those are all our single octave scales right there in a single octave form for the minor scale. 
Okay, let's go ahead and look at these exercises now. So they're on page 78, starting with number 4. We've got E minor single octave scale exercise 4. This could be played in multiple places. The first place that I'm going to play it here, or the only place that I'll really play it, but then I'll go over the other places we could play it. I'll start off right here in 7th position with my index finger on that E note on the 5th string. So then I've got 1, 3, 4. We're going to have one and two and ready and go and. Okay, now with that one, we've got that single octave using that same scale form one. We could do it at 12th position with the root on the sixth string. So you could play it there. And it's advisable that you do. And then we've got the one we just played there in seventh position. You could also replay it in second position using that form. So those are the three places using that form that it could be played. Then, if we switch to the alternate form, you'd have your pinky on that root on the sixth string. And we can play it there in ninth position using that alternate form. And it should be played that way as well. And then, we've got it in fourth position using the alternate form. So you get those two options using the alternate form. So number four should be played using all those. That would be really good for you. I'm going to go on to number five though, E minor single octave scale exercise five. This one's going to be up an octave. So we get to look at the options when we're reading up an octave. So with scale form one, we've got right there in ninth position, we can play it. So the root is on the third string. We start off in ninth position, 
when we get to the second string, we got to go to tenth position. So that's the place we can play this one, number five. We can play that one in ninth position with this first form. It's actually the only place we can play it with the first form. So let's go ahead and do it. Now with this one, you got to watch because it's going to go. It's going to. It's on both pages 78 and 79. So after we play those two lines, they're at the bottom of page 78. We got to continue over to page 79. Let's go ahead and do it. So you're going to have one and two and ready and go and. Okay, now that one could also be played with the alternate form. We use that pinky finger and we're going to put it right on uh, the 14th fret of string 4 and we have the alternate form there. Now we'd play with the pinky and then in the 11th fret on the next string you'd have 1, 2, 4 starting in the 11th. Then we have to shift up to the 12th fret, 1, 2, 4 for that 2nd string. So it could be read with that alternate form as well. And of course there's options if you want to get really high on the neck. But those are the comfortable places, best places to play it. Okay, so those are the single octave forms. Once we got that single octave form down, what do we like to do? We like to go on and play in the actual positions, combining those forms together. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. We've got five positions. 
five positions which will have both the major and minor scale within it, but five positions for G major or E minor, same as there are five positions for C major that sort of cover the whole neck. So those positional forms where we combine the single octave scales together, either in full or in part. So sometimes we have partials. So there on page 79, we're going to start with the key of G majors or E minor, depending on what we're playing at the moment, whether it'll be in, in uh, major or minor. But we're going to be in position two. So if we were to play the G major scale in position two, and come down and we have that low 16. We already read down here, but we've got our sixth string root there on the sixth, <laughs> the sixth string at the third fret. We're in second position and we can play that single octave scale. Then we switch to the alternate form in that position. And then on that high string, we can go up to step two or step nine if you want to think in a higher octave and then come back down. We've got that F sharp down there, so step seven to come back up on. This is for G major, the same form that we were playing in seventh position for C major. So we're using that same form. You can get comfortable with it. So that's where we are for G major. Then for E minor, we can start on step six of that G major scale is one way to look at it. But I've got the E there, second fret of the fourth string and from there I go one, three, four, one, three, four, two, four, and then on the higher string one, two, four, coming back to that root and then coming down I got four, two, one, four, two. So you can play the whole thing in that position. Now at the bottom of page 79, number 6 is the E minor scale in position 2. As we go through the book, the choice of major or minor often depends on what will fit on the page. So the minor one fit first, fit in this space best here. So we're going to do minor first in that position. So here we go. 1 and 2 and ready and go and...
Okay, let's go on over to page 80, and we'll do number 7. We'll be reading in G major this time, but still there in second position using those same notes. Here we go. One, and two, and ready, and go, and... Okay, we're going over to page 81 and do number 8, Miss Mikhail Drill. So, great old melody here. It's got lots of 16th notes, so we're going to go about 1 E and uh, 2 E and uh, we'll catch that pickup and uh, right there in the pickup measure. 1 E and uh, 2 E. <laughs> Thank you. 
let's go on and do number nine, Buffalo Gals. I'm going to give us a three beat count in and we'll catch beat four in the pickup measure. One, two, three. Okay, and we'll do number 10, shoe fly. One, two, ready, and. Okay, let's go on to page 82 and we'll look at the next position. So in this position, we're in fourth and fifth position. We've got a little bit of a shift with this position. If we start with G major, the G major scale, we've got the G note at the fifth fret on the fourth string. So that's where our middle finger would go and we can play form one. We've got a little shift when we get to that second string. Then we can continue on with form two. Then we go back to form one to return. We go to form two. We have that G major scale there, so get comfortable with that. Now, if we were to play the minor, the E minor option using that same scale form, our pinky starts on the E note, which is the lowest root, on the fifth string at the seventh fret. And we can start there. Play those same notes. lower strings sometimes on that fifth string it works to finger it three and one sometimes four and two or four and one just sort of depending on the melody and where we're going next what string we're going next to because we get that shift there between position four and five so it doesn't really matter just whatever works best in the moment but being able to do different versions of whether you're going to grab four one or four two or three play the melodies. Okay, we'll go ahead and play these songs and exercises that go with this position. Now, the order of them in this case, we're going to do the G major scale exercise first, then some songs, then we'll do the minor scale. It just kind of depends on what fits best on the page at the given time is the way these are organized. And it doesn't really, really matter because we're reading all in that same position anyway. So we're going to go ahead though and do number 11 which is exercise number eight so for this for this lesson so starting there on the g major we'll be there all right here we go one and two and ready and go and
Okay, we're going over to page 83 and do number 12, Martyr. So we're going to have one, two, reti, and... Okay, we'll do number 13, Yankee Doodle. It's going to have one, two, three. Okay, we'll go on to number 14, We Ever Pray For Thee. So we have one, two, ret, D, and... Okay, and we'll flip on over to page 84 and do number 15, which is E minor scale. It's exercise. It's the E minor scale exercise in this position. So we'll go ahead and do it. We're going to have one and two and ready and go and...
Okay, so let's go on to the next position, which is on the second half of page 84. So we're going to be in seventh position. In seventh position, for G major, our pinky starts on the G on the fifth string. So that's at the tenth fret. And we start in form two. Then we switch to form one to play the rest of the notes on the high end of that position. Then we go back to form two. And we switch to form one to play the available notes in the lower part of that position. So. playing in C major, we used that form in 12th position to play in the key of C major. But now in G major, we can use that form, that same scale form, in 7th position. For E minor, we start with our index finger at the 7th fret on the 5th string where we have the E, and we can play that same positional form, but we'll get E minor, the notes for E minor instead. Okay, let's go ahead and play these exercises in 7th position, starting with number 16, the E minor scale in position 7, exercise 10. So this is the 10th exercise, the numbers don't um, line up between 16 and 10 because we've had some songs in there, so that's that's the difference there. <clears throat> okay, we'll go ahead and play this. We're in 3-4 time, so I'll give us a 3-beat count in. 1 and 2 and 3 and... Okay, I'll do the G major scale exercise now. Number 17 there on page 85. So we're going to go one and two and ready and go and.
Okay, let's go over to page 86 and do some melodies, starting with Down in the Valley, number 18. We're in 3-4 time, so I'll give us a 3-beat count in. Watch the repeat signs. We've got a couple of them throughout this. 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Okay, let's go on to number 19, The Water Is Wide. This one's in 4-4 time, comes in on beat 2 in the pickup measure. So I'll give us 3, 4, 1, and we'll be in. 3, 4, 1. <laughs> Okay, let's go on to number 20, Tramp, Tramp, Tramp. This one has a lot of those dotted eighth note followed by sixteenth note rhythms. So it's got this kind of a fill. We're in 4-4 four, four time. We come in on beat four in the pickup measure though. So I'll give us a three beat counting and we will be in. One, two, three.
We'll go on over to page 87 and we'll look at the next position. So for the next position for G major and E minor, we're in ninth and 10th position. So for G major, we start with our middle finger on that G that is on the fifth string and we play scale four one. Now to fill out the rest of the position, when we get to the top of that scale, we switch to scale form two. Coming back down, we're in scale form one. Then we switch to scale form two to finish that out. So when we played in C major, we started with this scale form in second position. So we were in C major there. Now we're in G major when we play in the ninth and tenth position. minor in this position we start with our pinky on the 12th fret on that low 6th string and we can play it from there and we get E minor just like that so let's go ahead and play the songs and exercises in this position so we're going to start with number 21, which is exercise number 12 for these major minor scales. So it's a scale exercise number 12, but it's number 21 in this lesson. So we'll go ahead and do this one. One and two and ready and go and...
Okay, and we'll flip on over to page 88. Okay, so we'll do number 22, which is an E minor scale exercise. It's exercise number 13. Here we go. One and two and ready and go and... Okay, so let's go on to number 23. I've been working on the railroad. Now this one is on both pages 88 and 89. So you got to watch. you got to go over on to page 89 to finish it off. This one also has an accidental. If you take a look at the second measure of the second line, there's a G sharp. So we're going to have this A. G sharp is one fret higher than G, so it's at that 11th fret on the 5th string in that case. Okay, let's go ahead and play this. So you're going to have one, two, ready, and...
four. Now I didn't mention which fret the G sharp was in the higher octave, so hopefully you found that, but we have G at the 12th fret on the third string, so G sharp is one fret higher. Okay, we'll go on to number 24, my old Kentucky home. With this one we gotta watch out for these repeats. There's a first and second ending. And the first and second ending is, uh, there's a couple different times where that occurs. So we got it in the first two lines where we have the forward re repeat, um, sign so that's in the first complete measure so we repeat back to there with the first ending the first time which is on the second line and then the second time we use the second ending instead and then that happens again on the fourth and fifth lines where there's a repeat in that first measure of the fifth line the forward facing one so we repeat back to that spot when we get to that uh, fifth line we get the first ending the first time the second ending the second time Okay, let's go ahead and do this one. We come in on beat four in the pickup measure, so I'll give us a three beat count in. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, and we'll flip on over to page 90. We'll do the next position. It's the last position we're gonna do. Of course, we could continue to move up the neck if we could reach and do higher, but the last of the practical positions is up here in 12th position. And we go into 11th position a little bit. So our pinky for G major, our pinky is gonna be on the G at the 15th fret of the sixth string. And we play form two. We shift down to the 11th fret, and then when we get to that root, we're going to do form 1. And we're back to form 2, and we have 
just a little bit of form one there on that low string to fill out the position. So. Now when we were in C major, this was the one, this was the scale form that we used in fifth and fourth position to play in C major, but now we're playing in G major with that same scale form all the way up in twelfth position and we go into eleventh position just barely. For E minor, our index finger goes out the twelfth fret of the sixth string on that E, and we can play the position from there. Okay, let's go ahead and do these songs and exercises, starting with number 25 there on page 90. So, we're going to start off in 12th position, pinky on that root for G. This is G major scale, exercise 14. So, we're going to go 1, 2, and ready, and go, and...
Okay, we'll go over to the next page, page 91, and do number 26. So we got one, two, ready, and... Okay, and we'll do three blind mice, number 27. One, two, ready, and... Okay, we'll do number 28, Minuet in G. So we're in 3 4 time, I'll give us a 3 beat count in. 3, 2, 1. I hope you caught that C sharp accidental. I didn't give us a warning, but C sharp is one fret higher than C, so we were at the 14th fret on that second string with that C sharp. Okay, let's go on over to page 92 and we'll do number 29, which is exercise 15. It's the E minor scale exercise. So we'll just go ahead and do this one. One and two and ready and go and...
and we'll go on to the next section which is where we talk about doing moving from position to position so we've done this with both C major and we did it with A minor so here at the end of the lesson it talks about it again where we can move between positions now I'm not going to go through all the different ways but it's a good idea to practice all the different ways if you'd like to to get good using these exercises here number 30 and 31 and you can even return through out the lesson and play different songs and exercises shifting through the different forms if you really want to master shifting but just sort of a as somewhat of a review we've got the G major scale here in second position for example and then the next position up so that's in second position next position up we have in third or sorry fourth and fifth position Those two positions share some of the same notes, and we can shift between the two of them using stepwise motion. We can do it in different ways. I can start out 2, 4, and then finish out 3, 4 up in 5th position. Or I could go 2, 1, 3, 4. So there's different ways on each one of those strings I can shift between them. I can also go from this scale form in 2nd position and skip over the one in 4th and 5th position and go up to 7th position staying right with the same scale form. So if I go 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 4 to play one octave, I can do that on one string. So I can get from one position and skip over, just continuing with that form again. 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4. And I can continue there and be in seventh position. So I can do between those on every single string, and you can do that with actually every single scale, uh, every single of the five scale positions. So if that was position one, I could go between position one and two, or one and three. I should say scale forms one and two and one and three. If I was numbering each of the ones up the up the next, so that first position is one, the next position is two, the next one is three, the next one is four, and the last one is five. I can go between positions one and two or one and three. I could go two and four or two and three. Uh, so it works like that. I can do the next two. I can do from any one of the scales. I can do the next two with stepwise motion. We're just going to practice. I'm going to go through this scale exercise doing it one way. So I'm just going to use scale form, that first one. And that's actually the only position in the key of G that allows me to play those low notes that are part of this two octave scale exercise. And these exercises stay within two octaves to kind of maintain it. Some of the positions that we can play in won't actually give us the two octaves, so you would have to shift more, which is which happens in music all the time. Or you could replay exercises earlier and practice with them. But this is the plan that I'm going to use for this exercise just to demonstrate and to play it once so you've got it, so you can hear it and play along with it in different positions if you want to. But we've got that scale, and then on the higher string, we've got where we can play the root. So what I'm going to do is go from 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, using scale form 1 and shift up and use scale form 1 again. Now sometimes when playing an exercise, it doesn't work very well to go back and forth on that same string where we're going to do the shifting. That'll be my main approach, but sometimes I might come down lower in that position or go up higher in the other position. So in second position, I might go up a little higher because it facilitates playing it better, or in the fourth and fifth position, I may come a little bit lower. I'm going to go ahead and play number 30, which is on both pages 92 and 93, using the scale where I'm going to be shifting, for the most part, where that root is. So 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, sorry, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3. So shifting right to the next octave, shifting back down to the lower octave. That'll be my main goal. Here we go. One and two and ready and go and...
Okay, and we'll do number 31. Now 31 is up an octave, so I've got different options that would go up an octave, but if I start out in the ninth and 10th position, which is really just ninth position, and play my single octave scale there, using form one, but I can likewise shift up to the new one, which is 12th position, there on the third string. So it's just a parallel of what we were just doing, only one octave higher. And that's exactly what I'm going to do to play this. But of course, there's other options as well. So we'll go ahead and do number 31. One and two and ready and go and. Okay, now we look at the minor ones. Now with the minor ones, in the last lesson, which was lesson 10 when we did A minor, we looked at how we could shift from the minor form, where we had that A on the sixth string, and we can do the form one, one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three. We can actually shift up three, four, one, three, four, two, four, or one, three again. And that's the way we would go. In the same fashion that we can shift with the major scale from those five forms, those five positional forms, to the one that's just above it, or the or, uh, one that's two above it, you could say, so to the next one, or the one after that, we can do the same thing with the minor. Remember, it's the same five positional forms. But in the last lesson, I worked exclusively a lot, because the range of A minor, with going off that sixth string, and we looked at how we can go from fifth position up to the seventh position, or from fifth position right on up to seventh position, or how we can actually skip over that up to the ninth and tenth position. With this lesson, E minor, to, to play with those ones, will be way up high on the neck. And I never got into doing it off the fifth string. And with the major scale, I'd shown us how to shift off both the sixth string and the fifth string. So here we're just going to take a look at some of the ways we can shift, since I never explained them there. Okay, so starting there on the bottom of page 93, we're going to see how we can do E minor in seventh position and shift on up to ninth or tenth position, which is the next position. So we have the E minor scale in seventh position. And we have the E minor scale in ninth and tenth position, where I start with my pinky on the twelfth fret. Just like 
like so. So we can go from one to the next, and we can do that on each of the strings. Now, because we're just staying within the two octaves, I'm not going to worry about the sixth string. We're just going to worry about staying within the two octaves of the scale. So we're going to go from fifth position up to, or seventh position with that root on the fifth string, up to ninth and tenth position. So the first thing we can do is shift right on that fifth string. And you'll see there it's written out one, three, two, four. And there's multiple ways to do it as I explained in lesson 10, but we'll just go ahead and do the one that's written there. So you got one, three, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. And we get up to that second octave. like that, as easy as that. So we could use that one. If we flip on over to page 94, we'll get the next one where we can go, this time we'll do the shift on the fourth string. And with this one, it's again written in to go one, three, two, four. So we'll just do that. So we have one, three, four, one, three, two, four. that one. Then you'll see shifting on the third string. So when shifting on the third string, we're going to go index up to index. So one, three, four, one, three, four, one, one. And this one is a parallel, or in a way, it's like we're using the form one here, and then we're going to use form one here. So it's the exact same form, but an octave higher. So let's go ahead and do that one. So you got one, three, four, one, three, four, one, shift. Now we can shift on string two. With this one, we can go ahead and go one, two, and then finish out one, three, four. So one, two, one, three, four. That's the option that's written here. So let's just go ahead and play that one. So you go red, T, and. shift up on the top string and on the top string we'll use one two one three so same kind of thing so we go ready and So that's how we can shift from 7th position to ninth or 10th position, so to the next position up. Now if we skip over that one, over on page 95 we can see how to do these ones. So we're going to have 1, 3, 4, and then 1, 3, 4, and we would continue, and we have the E minor scale in 12th position. Now let's play through that E minor scale in 12th position. So you got 1, 3, 4. position and we're just using the two octaves and we're going from position seven up to that position and back again so we're not going to use that low sixth string but we can go ahead and start on the fifth string and we're going to have one three four shift up for one three four and then we continue let's go ahead and do it ready and and we'll come back down because that's the full second octave We can shift on the fourth string. When we shift on the fourth string, we're going to do the same kind of thing. One, three, four, one, three. You can use your ring finger or you can actually grab it with your pinky since we're going to be going up back down to the 11th position. So you can grab one, four, or one, three, and then, and then go on. It's written there to go one, three, which is completely fine. But let's do that string. So you go ready and...
course we can shift on the third string which we'll see there next and on that string we can go one three and then we're going to shift up for one two four when we shift up we're only shifting up to position 11 to finish off one two four up in 12th position so here we go let's do that one you got red t and we can do this on the second string. Now with that one we can go one, two, four and then shift up for one, two, four again. So we go red T and if we flip the page on over then we can go ahead and look at how to shift on the top string where we would also go one, two, four, and then one. Let's do that one. So you got red, D, and. Even though we're sticking to just the two octaves, we could of course finish out that octave if we wanted to. And when we're actually playing music, it doesn't usually stick to two octaves, but it makes it workable as we get started with this idea and then you can expand on the idea. Okay, let's go ahead and look at number 32. So this is exercise 18. It's a two octave E minor scale exercise. So we could play this one using any of the shifting options and you can practice it in all of those options. You could also practice playing higher if you wanted to and you have a guitar where you can reach using the ones, the different options we talked about in the last lesson. In lesson 10 for A minor, the same kind of thing would work with E minor where you have that root on the sixth string. So I introduced the ones here on the fifth string because we would have been super high when playing an A minor and now we'd be super high using the ones there for here but we can learn the fifth string one work on those really well which gives us two good options as we move forward into future lessons but here with this one number 32 I'm just gonna play it once and the way I'm gonna do it I'm gonna start off with that form one right there in seventh position so that single octave form one one three four one three four one three then for the higher octave, I'm going to go up to the ninth and 10th position using form 1 again. So we'll be borrowing from some of the notes in that position 9 and 10. And I'm going to stick to just that for the most part, but if in fingering things I come across a spot where it makes far more sense to continue up there in 7th position onto that 2nd string and shift later, then I will do that. Or vice versa, if I'm coming down and it makes sense to continue in ninth position onto that fourth string that I will do it that way as well. So we're looking for, as we learn music and read music, we're trying to do it the best way possible. And so sometimes forcing a shift is not the best way possible. But when we're practicing and learning exercises, forcing shifts actually helps us develop the ability to do so. So it's a good thing to do. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play this one. Here we go. One and two and ready and go and...
Okay, so that wraps us up for this lesson. You can practice shifting in positions with all the different songs and exercises. You can start out in a position other than the one specified and shift as needed. So lots of ways to practice with that and that becomes a necessity as we're working through and sort of deciding how to finger things when we're playing different music. I hope you're having fun with the guitar. Congratulations on learning to read notes. Now we've worked on the key of G. As we continue the lessons will go like this. We'll work on a key in all the different positions with the different single and then multiple octave scales. So really getting into mastering this neck, which is awesome. So keep at it and we'll see you in lesson 12. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For help with other guitar playing skills, check out more of my method books and the numerous lessons available as part of my online academy here on YouTube. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.